we've all been there where life has knocked us down and we've been wondering, what do we do? As Sylvester Stallone famously said in one of his Rocky movies, it doesn't matter how hard life hits, what matters is how fast you get up once you have been knocked down. <laughs> so we've all been there. I remember there was a time when, you know, I, I, I was having a really terrible time uh, in my work. I hated every minute of it. Going to work each day was, was so bad, uh, so depressing. I was under such a lot of stress. So like life had knocked me right down. Uh, I hated it. I hated the, uh, the people I was working with and it was, it was really, really stressful. Uh, one of the worst points of my life. But you always get back up again, isn't it? After that. And that's what I did. It took a while. It took a lot of strength. It took a lot of determination. But it happened. So when life knocks us down, we need to get back up again. There was another instance in my life where I was told, you know, you're having heart problems. You need to take it easy. You can't do all the things that you have been doing. Uh, you need to stop eating all these different types of food. And I thought, okay, so what's, what's the point of doing all that? Uh, if, you, if you can't enjoy your life, what's, what's the point? What's the point of living? So I start, started changing. I made lifestyle changes. Uh, today, although I'm about 20 years older than when it actually happened, today I feel 20 years younger. I have lost weight. I'm healthier. I'm stronger. So when life knocks you down, what do you do to get back up again? How do you get back up if you have fallen down? I guess this topic is important to so many people, isn't it? It's, it's important to all of us because no matter how rich we are, no matter how poor we are, no matter how successful or not successful we are, life is going to strike us down from time to time. And we have to be able to get back up again. It could be something to do with us as individuals, our health, our jobs, the economy. It could be to do with our family. It could be to do with someone getting sick, uh, wondering what to do, uh, losing, uh, losing your job. Uh, so many different things will happen to us, right? Life is going to strike. And when it does strike, it's going to strike hard. When that happens, how do we uh, get back up again? They say that we are not given any challenges that we are not able to tackle at that point of time. So the challenges that we get just makes us stronger so that we are able to face bigger challenges in the future. And that's, I think, a great way of looking at it as well. So there are always going to be setbacks. You try to do something, you might not succeed. We might fail. There might be obstacles in our way. We have to find a way over those obstacles or around those obstacles, a path to still get through and then achieve the success that we, that we want. Most of the time when people fall down, it's really difficult to get back up again because we're thinking, yeah, I can't. And it's whatever belief we have that leads us to the thoughts we're having. So if my belief is the life has really given me a strong blow, I can't get up again. Well, we are not going to be able to get up again because that's the belief that's going to drive our thoughts and the th thoughts that are going to drive our behavior and our actions. But if you think, yes, I've got a strong blow, I'm right down at the moment, but like so many people before me, I can get up again. And it's just a choice that we really make, isn't it? Even if you're given a death sentence and told, okay, you've got a sickness and only, you know, there's a 99% chance that you will die. If I'm told something like that, I think about what about that 1% chance then? If you said 99% chance that someone will die, what about the 1%? So I asked the doctor, so what happens in that 1%? Oh, no, no, right. There's a 1% chance that you will survive, but there's a 99% chance that you will die. They say, okay, I'll be in that 1% then. I make the choice to be in that 1% because that's the choice I can make, right? The doctor can't tell me you can't be in that 1%. No. <laughs> if there's a 1% chance of success, well, I choose to be there. And that's exactly what the science of quantum physics also tells us. You choose what you want it to be. You choose the possibility and then that's what will become the reality as well. So it's, it's a lot to do with our choices. How do we get back up again? Someone who really epitomized this of getting back up again was the late great Nelson Mandela in jail for 27 years. 27 years. Imagine that. 
and all the time he's in jail, he's thinking, how do I get back up again? What am I going to do when I am released? And a famous quote of his, he says, the greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. And, and that, I think that's fantastic, isn't it? The greatest glory in living lies not in falling, because we're going to fall, but in rising every time we fall. And that's what makes us who we are. That what, that's what makes us a champion. And that's a choice that each of us as individuals can choose to make. How are we going to get up? How fast are we going to get up? It doesn't matter what life throws at us. What matters is how fast we get up. The famous story of Thomas Edison, where he says he was you know, walking down the road and he met a lady. And the lady said, Mr. Edison, can I ask you a question? And Thomas Edison said, sure, tell me, what was the question? And she said, you know, Mr. Edison, I, I think you're incredibly stupid. And it's this great inventor turned around and said, Madam, why are you calling me stupid? And she said, I heard that you failed 9,999 times before you could invent the light bulb. And Edison turns back and says, Madam, I did not fail 9,999 times, but I found 9,999 ways that the light bulb should not be invented. So I tried a route, it didn't work. I just discarded that route and I tried the next one. Didn't work, discarded that. So it's not failure, it's learning. That's a great way of looking at what we might sometimes call failure, isn't it? It's not failure, it's learning. As long as we are learning, we are not failing. It's all experience. In order to succeed, no matter how hard life strikes us, our mindset becomes very important because our mindset is what is creating that foundation of beliefs. What do I think is possible? What do I think I can do? What do I think I can't do? Like Henry Ford said, if you think you can, you're absolutely right. And if you think you can't, you're absolutely right. What matters is not so much whether you can or you can't, it's whether you think you can or you think you can't. Because either way, <laughs> you're absolutely right. You think you can, you're right. You think you can't, you're right. So do we have a growth or a fixed mindset? It's a, it's a very topical uh, uh, thing at the moment. Growth versus fixed mindset. A fixed mindset is, no, this is all I can do. This is all I know. These are the circumstances. This is the environment. Yeah, this is the politics, whatever it is. This is my organization. This is my boss. There's nothing else I can do. So it could be called a fixed mindset. It could also be called being a victim of circumstances. So growth mindset. I, I can always grow. I can always do something different. I'm always learning. Sky's the limit. Whatever I want to, I can do. Whatever I want to learn, I can do. And that's also being a creator of circumstances and not a victim. See, if you are a creator of circumstances, we can only progress, isn't it? We can only move forward because life is going to be fantastic. Because I'm always thinking, whatever happens, I have a choice there. Whatever happens, I can choose to do something different. So I'm a creator of my circumstances. I'm not playing the victim. It doesn't matter. Government changes. It doesn't matter. New president. It doesn't matter. I get sick. It doesn't matter. What do I do after that? I can still be a creator of my circumstances, which means I am in control of my life. And that's, that's, that's really great. That can only make us stronger. Let's not talk about failure. Let's get this word failure out of our mind. And let's, whenever we, we do something where we consider that we have failed, let's label it learning instead. And the way we look at it is going to be entirely different. Because it's not a failure. It's a learning. It's an instance of learning. It's a situation of learning. It's an occurrence of learning. It's a chance to learn. It's an opportunity to learn. That's great. We can never succeed in anything without failing. You talk to some of the most successful people in the world and you ask them, did you ever fail? They'll tell you thousands of times. I have failed so many, so many, so many times. Try something, fail. Doesn't matter. Learning, not failure. And now I look at it in a different way. What can I do differently? I shouldn't keep on doing the same thing in the same way and expecting a different result. That was famously what Einstein called uh, his definition of insanity. Doing something in the same way, but expecting a different result. So that's not going to help us to succeed then. If I do something, it doesn't work. What do I learn from that? How do I do it differently? That's all. And then we can keep moving 
forward. Have you read the books uh, Harry Potter? I have. I used to wait for the next one to come out. I watched all the films as well. But did you know that J.K. Rowling was rejected by so many publishers? I, I, I don't remember the exact number. I think it was 20 something publishers who rejected her, who said this is nonsense. We don't want it. Until she finally struck success with one of the publishers and the rest, as they say, is history. Uh, she became a multi, multi billionaire after that. But so many people rejected her. Colonel Sanders, who started the KFC, was rejected by so many people before he finally was able to get someone to help him, to back him, to finance him, so that he could start this uh, restaurant which, which became a global chain. So, somebody rejects us, don't worry about it. Let's just keep, keep looking, keep finding. Till we find the people who are going to support, who are going to help us, who are going to invest in whatever idea that we have. Life can knock us down. What matters is how fast do we get up. So what are some practical steps that we can use to get back up when life knocks us down? Number one, we need to first accept what has happened. Accept the reality. Look at the situation, see it for what it is. What has happened? What can I learn from this? What did I do right? What did I do wrong? What do I need to do different the next time? They say you can never help an addict to come out of his addiction if he or she doesn't first accept that there is a problem. Because if there is no problem, there is nothing to solve, right? In order to solve something, we have to first accept that there is a problem, an issue, and then we can solve it. Take time to figure out what happened. What can I learn from this? What did I do right? What did I do wrong? What am I going to do different the next time around? And learn from the experience. So based on our reflection, we can actually set new goals. So therefore, what am I going to do? What am I going to do differently? And make sure our goals are smart, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant to us, and it has a time frame in, all, in, in, in which I'm going to achieve this goal. Also, build a support system, right? Have some people whom we can count on to give us straight feedback. I need someone to tell me, Sanjeev, I don't think that's going to work. This is wrong. Or why don't you look at it a different way? At least to challenge me, to call me out when I'm trying to do something which is, which is actually stupid. And I have to be open to listen to people's feedback. Finally, let me, make the, let me make the choice. I will make the judgment. What am I going to do in future? But let me take all that feedback openly and see, is it correct? Am I doing something wrong? Can I change? Let's be humble enough to take people's feedback. But also know that everyone who gives you feedback is not going to give it with your best interest in mind. There will be some people who will give you feedback just to make sure you fall and fall hard. So have a good support system of people that you trust who you know are going to encourage you when you're down, help you to get up, lift you up, and also call you out when you're, when you're making the wrong call or you're, you're making a bad decision. So at least it will get you thinking, am I on the right track? Should I do something differently? Even after all the feedback, if you think, no, no, the feedback is all wrong. This is what I'm going to do. I believe this is right. I believe I should do that. Well, then go for it. Because finally, you are the best judge. But be open enough to listen to what other people think and say. And just look at who these people are as well. So have your carefully handpicked support network who's going to support you and whom you can count on, right? They say it's, it's great to have a mentor. Yeah, someone who has gone through stuff, someone who has a lot of experience, uh, someone who's in your corner. And some, so someone who's going to help, not to help you to do the work, but help you to think maybe in a different way. Share some experience, maybe ask the right questions. So that's important. You want to bounce something off me? You can always do that, right? You can always put it in the comment and I will definitely, 100% sure, I will get back to you. I believe I was put on this planet to help. If someone needs my help, I will always be there to help that person. So do reach out if that person is you. The best way to get up when life has knocked us down is to actually get up. If someone knocks you down, you need to stand up again, isn't it? If life knocks us down, we need to take some action. As soon as you take some action, you have actually started the process of recovery. Life knocks us down, we are in despair, we are in depression, we just go and lie on our bed and you can't get out of bed. That's not going to help because we are not taking action. Nothing is happening differently. We need to take action. Even if it means just go for a walk, go get some fresh air, go talk to some friends. 
Let's just go for a walk. Going for a walk gets our energy levels up again. It gets the endorphins moving, which changes mood. As soon as mood changes, we are able to see things in a different way. We are going to see opportunities we didn't see before. We are going to find ways of coming out of this problem that we didn't see before. We are going to see ways that we can get up that we didn't see before. So if you're feeling down, life has knocked you down, do something, do something different. Take action, even if it means just going out, going for a walk. Get some exercise in, just, just do 40 jumping jacks. Yeah, I know what jumping jacks are, right? It gets the heart moving, it gets more oxygen in, and all of this exercise actually changes mood. And that's so important, right? Because as soon as mood changes, we start to see opportunity. So do the practical things, do the, do the things with action, even if it is going and getting some exercise. And that's actually the simplest thing to do. Because remember, our mind, our thoughts, our energy, our feelings are all connected. And so the easiest thing to change out of that is our energy. Because if your energy is up, you'll find that you think more positive thoughts. You'll find that you are happier. Same way, have you realized that when you're tired at the end of the day and your energy is down, we get more negative thoughts. If some small thing goes wrong, we get really angry, we get really upset. That's because energy levels are down. You take a small break, you have a good cup of tea, you, you get and get some energy back into your body and the thoughts change as well. So it's all connected. Our thoughts, our energy and our feelings. And of those three, the easiest one to reset is energy. So remember that. Go do something practical. We have to take action. So what were the steps we discussed so far? Number one, accept the realities. See what has happened, what we can do differently. What have I done right? What have I done wrong? Number two, let's set new goals. Number three, get that support system in, around us. Get that support system in place. Number four, take action. Number five, very important. Be grateful for what we have. Because even though there are things going wrong, there are also things that we still have for which we can be grateful for. We have things going right in our life. And that's extremely important to be grateful and thankful. Because as soon as we are grateful and thankful, and even the very act of thinking of what can I be grateful for actually changes our brain chemistry. We start feeling better. Because if I am grateful for something, I can't also be down, right? So as soon as I'm grateful, it changes my brain chemistry, it changes the way I look at things, it changes the way I feel about things, which is then going to help me find more opportunities and find ways to get out of this hole that I have fallen into, isn't it? So we have fallen into a hole, life has knocked us down. First thing we need to do is stop digging because the more we dig, the more we play the victim, the more I want people to feel sorry for me, the more I'm finding reasons why I can't get out. What am I doing? I'm just digging myself deeper into that hole. So I need to stop digging. One way to do that is practice being grateful. As Winston Churchill famously said, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that comes. And Mr. Churchill did that. It's so much of opposition, he just kept going. Michael Jordan, one of the greatest basketball players possibly ever, was cut from his high school, high school basketball team. He lost his position. He didn't give up. He came back. He tried harder. He practiced more. Right? And finally, the rest is history. He became one of the greatest basketball players ever. It's, it's attitude. Attitude, attitude, attitude matters so much. Oprah Winfrey. Grew up in poverty, she was abused, numerous professional setbacks. I was listening to an interview of hers recently where she said, you know, her early bosses, you know, just didn't give her an opportunity, just kept pushing her down and how she overcame all of that. Uh, she stood for what she believed was right. At one point she got a better job offer, but she still believed in what she was doing and she thought, no, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get back up again. And she did. Famous story of Malala from Afghanistan, she was shot by the Taliban. And today she is a Nobel Peace Prize winner against so much of odds, which is fighting for children's education worldwide. There's a fantastic book about her. Then there's Nick Wishik, born without arms and legs. Today, famous global motivational speaker goes around helping people to get back up again after life has struck them down, which he has done in his life, isn't it? It's such a wonderful story of resilience, of determination, of perseverance, of seeing a bigger purpose for life. So it's not what we are born with, it is what we make 
of our lives that that really matters it doesn't matter where we are born it doesn't matter uh, what our background is it doesn't matter what our circumstances is it doesn't matter which country we live in what matters is what do we believe our purpose is what do we believe we are put on this earth for what do we believe we can contribute and we need to do that life is going to knock us down let's get back up again that just makes us stronger in conclusion i hope you enjoyed this video please don't forget to subscribe yeah and to maybe just give us a comment uh, sh show some love put a like on that uh, just click on the like button I like the video share it with others uh, whom you feel might need this right people who are going to tough times in their life who need someone to help them get back up again i can help just reach out and i'll be happy to try to help in some way i hope you like the video stay tuned for more content like this don't forget to subscribe till we meet again stay safe and stay blessed